kind of, I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to watch because I mean, clearly, if you want to look at the differences, yeah, what's up? You know, I don't think this is the country. Yeah, yeah, you know. All right, let's get a roll. Are you going to announce the trivia there? Yeah, he's got to bring that. I can't if, unless you want to. No, you you do it. I, I'm, I'm all. Okay, get the I'm, get the turn clock. <laughs> Turn on the heat. Yeah. Ah, Jesus, you're not going to be here that long. Yeah, of course. Well, 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 <laughs> I like your attitude. <laughs> I thought, look, I thought we were supposed to bring. No. Psst. What is that? Credit check. This is all cheap. Rock and roll. Okay, the time being 6.30, I'd like to call this meeting of the Abington Board of Selectmen. Would you all please rise, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and remain standing for our first announcement. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen regrets to announce the passing of George Snow, 83 of Abington, who passed away on January 16th. George retired from the Abington Public Schools, where he served in the maintenance department for several years. George will be deeply missed. Would you please join us in a moment of silence for George Snow? Thank you. Be seated. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Tables are still available for Tricentennial Trivia Night at the VFW this Saturday night, January 28th. Uh, doors open at 6 p.m. and it's $20 per person. Uh, for information, Mike, Mike, What's that? Who, who should they contact if, if they're uh, if interested? If uh, they're they interested can, in the they trivia can night. Contact me, Jan Prawl, or Rita or Bob Wick. Okay. Contact Mike Franey, Rita, or Bob Wing. Uh, any, any other uh, public announcements? No? Okay. All right. <clears throat> First on the agenda, we have the ceremonial pinning of three new firefighters, Anthony Conso, Jared Driscoll, and Christopher Cotty. Chief? Thank you. Once again, the Abington Fighter Department has taken over the beginning of one of your meetings. <laughs> and I can actually get used to this because each time we're doing this, we're either promoting or adding personnel to the fire department. Uh, I'm not sure how long we can continue this trend, but we're certainly going to try that. Uh, tonight we have three firefighters. They've actually been with the fire department uh, either since October or November, depending upon the personnel. Uh, two of these firefighters graduated the Massachusetts Fire Academy in December 23rd, just before the holidays. They've actually been working for the town of Abington through the academy during the 12-week process uh, since October when they started. And the third firefighter is actually currently enrolled in the Brockton Fire Academy. He started that January 11th. We had also been using him as a paramedic uh, for about a month prior to that. Uh, but tonight's the, the official night. We're going to present them with their firefighter badges and officially welcome them to the town of Abington. Uh, first up, Anthony, if you want to come up. We have firefighter paramedic Anthony Conso and his wife Donna, who's going to present the badge to him. Anthony, congratulations. Thank you. Donna, here you go. Congratulations. Don't pin him. You want to hold the applause till afterwards. The second firefighter paramedic is firefighter paramedic Jared Driscoll, if you want to come up. And presenting his badge is his dad, who is also an advocate of firefighter paramedic. Mike, there you go. Congratulations. I'd like to add that while Mike's doing that, all of these firefighters were hired from the state civil service firefighter paramedic list. And they were all certified as paramedics prior to coming on board. And we had to send them to the fire academy to train them to become firefighters. So once we are completed, once uh, Chris is completed with the Brockton Fire Academy, he'll join firefighter uh, Conso and Driscoll as, as a very experienced cross-trained member and employee for the town of Abington. Chris, if you want to come up uh, with your wife, Karen. 
Again, Christopher Crotty, he's currently enrolled in the Brockton Fire Academy, also with firefighter Justin uh, Silva. There you go. We actually presented his badge earlier this year because he worked all summer to help us out as a firefighter paramedic previously from the town of Halifax. We've now taken him currently off shift for the 12-week program to go to the Brockton Fire Academy. This actually brings the number of new firefighter paramedics for the Abington Fire Department to five uh, this year. And it also brings us back, or will bring us back, to the staffing levels of 2009. Uh, once firefighter Crotty and Silva graduate from the Brockton Fire Academy, I'm anticipating about the end of March or early April, depending upon the winter, we should have sufficient manpower to reopen Station 2. That's our goal. I was hoping to be able to do that in January. I was not able to get those two firefighters in the State Fire Academy that just graduated them back in December. So that's what's holding us up at this point. So if you have any other questions, I just... <coughs> I want to thank you again for your time with this and just to give you a progress report that we are proceeding forward. We're trying to fill some of these vacancies and reestablish some of the service with Station 2 of the town. Thank you, Chief. That's good news. Thank you, Chief. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Yeah. Uh, Chief, would you uh, I just wanted to uh, make a couple of comments. First of all, I, I think that since um, the Chief has assumed his duties, he's done a magnificent job with the department. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's certainly a lot of commitment on the part of the town to make certain that um, we provide him with the resources he needs that are reasonable, that we can afford. Um, but I, I think that if you look at the budget presentation and budget process that we just went through today with um, Chief Nuttall, I think that um, you're going to see a department over the next three years that's going to be probably one of the more progressive, well-equipped, uh, technologically and um, traditionally as far as fire fighting, firefighting apparatus are concerned. And that is due to his leadership uh, thus far as, uh, as the chief in, in Abington. And I can only expect uh, a significant amount of improvement over the years to come. So I'd like to congratulate you and your men for uh, the, the heading of the department, where it's going, and where we all know, with the capability and talent that you have, uh, where this department can, can rise to. So congratulations on, on my behalf. I appreciate that. But adding to that, I certainly can't do this by myself. I think really the congratulations go to the other the gentlemen and their families in this room. They're really the ones that, even getting these five additional firefighters, this town is still very short staffed in the fire department. I realize the budgetary restraints and restrictions we're all faced with, but for the amount of workload that is presented to the Abington Fire Department, uh, as well as the ambulance staff, you know, the cross-training of the members, the amount of motor vehicle accidents, medical emergencies, fire alarms, we're a very busy department for a small town. In fact, you know, Abington really has seen the urbanization of this town. This isn't the same Abington as 20 years ago. We've had major construction in this town that I think a lot of people take for granted. They're kind of off track and people don't realize just how much the population and the structures have grown that this small fire department has to deal with all the time. It's, it's this group of gentlemen here and their families that support them to really make this, make this happen. And I'm just trying to get us back up to the staff that at least we used to have. We're trying to close the gap with the dispatch. That's going to be taken care of from Holbrook shortly, which is going to keep us safer, keep the residents safer, and, and try to fill some of these gaps that we've had for years. So I, I thank them for doing all the work. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, I can congratulate these guys in person. Next on the agenda, <coughs> yep. we have the transfer of a Class II license. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 23, 2012, at 6.45 p.m. in the Carter Hearing Room, 
500 Glenowix Way in the application of Edward B. McLaughlin, Mass Car Mart LLC, DBA Mass Car Mart, to transfer a Class II license from Nicole Edge, DBA Northeastern Auto Wholesale, 766 Adam Street. I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the hearing is open. Do we have uh, the petitioner with us? We do. Is Edward McLaughlin here? Yes. Hi, Ed. Could you uh, take the microphone and introduce yourself, please? How you doing? I'm Eddie McLaughlin. Okay. And you are the, uh, you're the petitioner for this license? I am. Okay. If you mind, we're, we're going to have some questions for you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> we did receive, I think, today mm -hmm. some backup information regarding uh, the layout on uh, Bedford Street. And yeah. Uh, we also received uh, an indication that the fees and taxes are paid to date and um, I believe that both the building inspector and the deputy chief have approved uh, based on their scope of uh, inspection. Um, they have fire extinguishers, exits, uh, the number of cars on the lot are okay. Um, and I think the only question that I would have, uh, of course, if the board would permit, is whether or not the previous license had less cars than the current license, or is this an increase in the number of cars on the lot? Do you have, uh, yes. Uh, no, I believe, uh, he I had believe it's the same. The same amount of cars. The same is it amount 45? of cars. Yeah. It's a total of 20, yeah. I think, right now. No, it's yeah, 45. That's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Total of 20. So it's staying. Yep. It's staying 20. It's staying 20. Staying 20. Staying 20. The number of cars are the same. Are you going to be repairing the cars on premise, or no, are you going to no, contract out? Strictly selling, contract out. Mm -hmm. I sell all my repairs out. Do you have the name of the company that you I'm are going? I'm currently using CDI Automotive. They're on uh, Route 123 at 800 South Street in Brockton, Mass. And uh, I can get you enough contact information on there if you need to, if you need it. No. If I could, Mr. Chairman. Sure. <clears throat> um, just so you, just for the record, and, uh, Mr. McLaughlin, you understand that the number of cars for sale is only 15? I do. Okay, and you understand you can't go above that? I do. Very good. Other than that, Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. McLaughlin? We should see if anybody in the audience does any Does anyone uh, like to speak to this petition? No? If not, Mr. Chairman, I move we close the hearing. Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Congratulations. No, no, no. no that's just, that was just, oh, just I'm sorry. Close the hearing. I'll move we, uh, I'll move we approve the transfer of the license. Second. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, now it's congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John, I like this too. The fact, yeah. John, yeah. I like this. The fact that you have the, uh, the plot plan here with the marking. I, I think it's good that we, this. you know, develop a process going forward that gives us an idea of what's going on. How many cars are for sale? Okay. Next, well, we have another transfer of Class Two. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 23rd, 2012, at 6:55. It's not really 655. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have, has everybody have a, had a chance to look over the minutes for January 9th? Yep. yep. Okay. We approved to, uh, minutes of January 9th. Open session. Open session. Okay, second? Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the minutes of January 9th open session are approved. I move we approve the minutes of January 9th executive session not to be released until all matters are settled. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mike, were you there? Where is it? Oh, for the executive. I was, no, I wasn't there. Okay, so four and one recused for, to approve the, the executive session minutes one up session. for uh, January 9th. <clears throat> all right. See here, we got a few minutes, John. Would you, uh, how long is the um, the vote to adopt the roadway acceptance procedure going to take? It's um, it's been in the packet. It should be uh, not an issue at all. I can go over it very briefly. If you're asking about town manager's report, that could be an hour or so tonight. <laughs> um, in your packets tonight, you'll you'll see that there is a, um, a recommendation that was reviewed and approved by both town council and the the planning board the purpose of the procedure for roadway acceptance is to clear up any um, prior practice or uh, perceptions or 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 mis uh, understandings regarding um, how roads will be accepted in the town of um, abington and so therefore what you you'll see here uh, is a roadway acceptance procedure that clearly articulates and out outlines exactly how the town will set forth its procedures in accepting uh, subdivision roads and other public wa ways in the uh, the town of, uh, of Abington. The Board of Selectmen serve as the uh, road commissioners and as such are responsible for not only procedures but the manner in which the roads are accepted to ensure that they are accepted um, with all of the supporting documentation, all of the recommendations from uh, the various boards, and um, how they are set forth in the in the period of time allotted between 90 and 120 days prior to town meeting. Um, submissions uh, must be submitted uh, documents to the board of selectmen. Uh, title certification, copy of deeds and other instruments, as built plans, um, and and roadway acceptance and uh, definitive subdivision plans, along with legal descriptions and fees. Between 80 and 90 days, a vote to intend to lay out the public way, a referral to planning board and planning board review, um, as determined by the board of selectmen. Then there's a warrant article, in approximately 30 days prior to town meeting. Notice to owners, the selectmen will notify the abutters and the owners, uh, first class mail at the applicant's expense. Uh, it goes through those procedures 15 to 20 days prior to town meeting. A public meeting to adopt uh, the order of layout will be held, uh, similar to what we do now, uh, but we finally committed it to writing. At least seven days prior to town meeting, uh, final layout, uh, file the layout with the clerk's office, uh, and then the uh, the all coveted vote at town meeting uh, to approve the um, road or the subdivision roads uh, as a, uh, a public way. And then it even talks about the uh, title certification, the acquisition of land and easements, uh, acquisition of eminent domain. It lays out a very um, descriptive process that, that uh, the board requires them to follow. In addition to that, you know, uh, petition for roadway acceptance, which is attachment A, um, it has to be um, laid out um, in a certain way with uh, certain wording. These petitions for ro roadway acceptances will be, um, you know, provided uh, to residents upon request or uh, developers or um, subdivision owners. And a grant of easement, what is required in the grant of easement uh, relative to um, the road layout um, and what we are looking for. We could be looking for drainage easements. We could be looking for um, utility easements. And those are usually the two uh, most uh, sought after easements that the uh, town uh, would, um, uh, would look for. And that pretty much lays it out, no pun intended. <laughs> I think, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's very comprehensive. I congratulate the town manager. I think it's something that's long overdue, and I think it, it details exactly what needs to be done 
And for procedural purposes, I move we adopt the uh, roadway acceptance procedures as delineated. We have a second. And second that. Any further discussion? And yes. The planning board has approved this also. Correct? There have been amendments that went back and forth between council and the planning board, and they have accepted these as well. Correct. I agree with Kevin. I think this is long so overdue. They had, and it's, uh, they had public hearings as well. Did they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's unanimous. All right. <coughs> Get back up the ladder. Right, let's see. Yeah. Okay. We have a transfer of a Class two license. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 23rd, 2012 at 6.55 p.m., in the Carter Hearing Room, 500 Galinowitz Way, on the application of Robert DeMore, DBA DeMore Auto Sales, to transfer a Class II license from C. Pauline Petrozillo, DBA Prime Auto Sales, 1420 Bedford Street. I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the hearing is open. Uh, is the petitioner here? Is um, Rob, Robert DeMore here? Mr. DeMora, could you just um, take the microphone and introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Robert DeMora. Thanks. Just hold on one second, Rob. Changing the hours of operation? No, well, no. I never do the same. You got 40 cars for sale. You're the only one working there? Yes. What is the current uh, what the current license? How many vehicles for sale on the class two? 40. Exactly. There is one. And this is, just refresh my memory, this is up across from uh, Andrews and Pierce, where, uh, what do they call it now? It's right next to Vin and Eddie's, right out right. there, and the Whitman <laughs> body works behind it, it's a stream auto for the rain. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone here tonight on the floor have any questions for this hearing? No. no. Jim, I have one question. It says existing sign and new sign does that mean there'll be two signs and is that legal i'm not sure what the signage you know if it's other signage rules the town has or with the body So there's two signs there now already. There's two signs there. Is there, is there two businesses at this address? There's three businesses. There's Whitman Body Works and uh, Six Spring Wing and Auto behind them. But they're not on this lot, though? No. Okay. Anything else? No. I just had the same question. I guess you understand that. You can have no more than, if we approve it, 40 cars for sale. Okay. And uh, you understand the hours of, of operation uh, you have as, uh, as you have submitted, so you can't go above or below that. That's fine. Too. You understand that. Okay. I understand. Who do you, who do you contract with um, for repair services? I was going to um, use Extreme Marine and Auto. He's like right on the, kind of abuts the, the car lot. Extreme Marine and Auto? Yes. Okay. Okay. If nobody has anything else for Mr. DeMore, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. Uh, does anybody? I did, yes. I did, yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, you did. I'm sorry. I might, uh, move we close the hearing. A second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, All right. Okay, the hearing is now closed. I move we grant the transfer of the license as delineated on the application. Okay, second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda.
Next on the agenda, we have an update from our SAGE committee. Would, uh, would the chairman of the SAGE committee care to approach the mic? Chairwoman. Good evening. Uh, Susan Brennan, chairwoman of the SAGE committee. Saving Abington with green energy. And I did uh, have some handouts. Um, saving Abington with green energy. Um, enclosed, you will see our year-end 2011 report. Um, on the second page, um, we just had a meeting Thursday evening, last Thursday, Thursday evening. We are going into our third year. So we are very proud of our achievements. Um, we're moving forward into 2012. Uh, some of the projects that we have successfully accomplished, we are very proud of. Um, the residents of Abington have been extremely helpful. The volunteerism has been above and beyond. And I think we're all working for the greater good to make Abington a greener environment. Um, the, the big, and I think the most visual project would be saving Abington um, cleanup days, cleanup days. And we help, we hold that every April and we're going into our third year. Um, the Griffin's Dairy is another big endeavor that we took under and that was extremely successful. Um, we have a fall yard sale for open to all residents. So those are good projects we presently will recreate this year and um, with more to follow. So, um, in the packet yeah. is our list of members. We presently are nine appointed. We have eight so far, so we do have an opening. Um, what else do I have for you? <clears throat> we have a website, abingtonsage.com. And in the very back of your packet, it shows how many people visit our website, how many utilize it. Um, so we're really, really trying to do a lot of outreach. Um, it's easier to post on a website. People can come and look at it, all our activities, upcoming events. So, And we track that every month, see how we do. Well, pretty consistent. We'd like it better. <laughs> Abingtonsage.com. Oh, thank you, Sue. Yes, yes. Does anybody have any questions for Sue? If I could, Sue. Yes. Um, in terms of getting certified as a green community, yes. um, is that something that, what are your thoughts on that? That is the ultimate to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, I did include a, a packet that outlines what we have to do to achieve a green status community. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's five bullet points that we have to achieve to attain that status. One is, of course, energy auditing. We do have Gerard McClellan, who has been going around to the different schools with the help of Jason Lynn. He's been very instrumental and helpful. He's, Gerard has done some preliminary review of the buildings. <clears throat> so that's the first criteria. There's four other additional criteria. Um, he, Gerard did ask if the town would be willing to give him authorization to call our energy suppliers to obtain how they do charge us, how we are structured, um, and then he will have a report, a conclusive report on the buildings and how we are charged from our energy. Oh, so sure, they, absolutely. That we just discussed that Thursday night, so mm -hmm. that would be extremely helpful mm -hmm. to Gerard to pursue that. And then there's a few other things, little jumps, but the, but the big benefit to this is there's, and correct me if I'm wrong, how many communities? 350 or 380 in the Commonwealth? 352. 352. 352. <clears throat> 86 have already achieved this status. The state authorizes money up to a quarter million dollars for these towns to become a green status community. So above and beyond achieving it, which would help, of course, all of us in the long run, monetarily and environmentally, we will achieve, we can apply for monies from the states. Back in the fall, my chairwoman, Lorraine Ryerson, and I met with um, 
John Diagostino, and we discussed becoming a 503C nonprofit. I think in the long mm -hmm. run, and how is that going along? We, we can be ready to go with paperwork. Beautiful. Right? But you have to tell me what the organization is going to be. You know, the board of directors and all of wonderful, that. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and I think that will help us acquire grants to do these initiatives that we're hoping to do. Um, one of them, unfortunately, could be a monetary thing for the highway. They have to retrofit some of their equipment. But with grants from the state, that could help us achieve that status also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but that is the ultimate goal. Okay, yeah, I, I guess just to, only because I've done a little bit of work in this area. And Beautiful. I, just my own personal comments, where I don't know whether I really want to see you go into a 5013C. Okay. I think it would be much beneficial for the town to be certified. Um, we did, there is grants available actually, um, former town manager in Plymouth is now the commissioner of this organization and um, it, my experience is that the, uh, because it, as you point out, there's so few communities that are actually certified, there are funding available for communities to do just that so that there is a wealth of not only information but a, a resource to tap, you know, to to go into that. And that's so, a new person in Plymouth? Uh, would, he's now the commissioner of this of the, uh, the Department of Energy Resources. Oh, wonderful. I, I have a question. I don't know if anyone can answer it. To, to achieve green community status, would you have to adopt the green building code in town? The know? stretch code? Mm -hmm. that, that, oh. yeah. 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 Would you have to adopt that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. It, adds, it adds a little bit of money to, to the project, no question. But the payback in environmental um, friendliness and, and, and the environment in and of itself will certainly pay for itself over time. It, 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 is, it is more money, but you know, um, it's not, you'll find out that you'll, in the long run, save more money in energy costs by doing that. Yeah. So it is, that's the stretch code, that was correct yeah. on that one, yeah. So like I said, there's a few hoops, but they're attainable. Just, as far as the grants, once you become a green community, is that what happens? You are eligible to receive grants? Well, you're always eligible, but I think that will put us in a, a better position. And what are the grants used for? You know? A barrage of things. Um, uh, solar panels, retrofitting windows, insulation, um, anything that has to do with saving energy. In, we, would, we were starting with the... Um, town buildings and, and then of course go to the residents, you know. Like you said, this is a grassroots team, um, they're working diligently, uh, we're learning as we go, with the assistance of the town manager and you guys would be wonderful, um, you know, so, it's a funny look Chris. Does anybody? You're not liking that stretch thing? No. no. Does anybody have it? <laughs> uh, specific? Yeah. What, is, what does the stretch thing mean exactly? I mean, you seem hesitant. It's just a more stringent building code. It's a building that's just small and stretches it yeah. out. Yeah. Take a look at number five here on page two. That's yeah. No, it, 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 requires, it requires that you provide a certain percentage of the building as renewable energy resources, uh, solar paneling. Um, uh, you also build a building in a certain way and design it. It affects it every yeah, aspect of the job. It's, it's different framing. It's different everything. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of <clears throat> contractors are complaining about it. The only, the, I think the closest town that has it is Milton. No, there are some green um, apartment um, units on 18, I believe in Whitman on the left-hand side, that are built um, using um, energy grant monies. Could have been. They don't look. They don't look too bad, but you can certainly see with somebody's barbecuing on the uh, grill from Route 18. Kenny, uh, Sue, it says you're looking for a new member. How would someone get in, uh, in touch with you? To, you know, the protocol for appointees are at our website. Yeah, you can, website. the town website www.abingtonme.gov. Click on Green um, Sage and it'll take you, I believe, to your link. But you also have a form that you have to oh, fill out there online. Oh, yes, there is a form that you have to fill out online uh, to volunteer for a committee and then come before the board and, and be appointed. That was like well rehearsed. That was very good. You like that? Thank, guys you. Thank you. But can we post it there? There is an opening, so, so if someone's interested okay. in joining. If, there is a, if it, it, it hasn't done, yeah. done already. We'll post it. I, just, I have a question about uh, 
you see it a lot in the news, and uh, I think it's been brought to our attention um, as board members. We received some letters about um, solar and wind power. I know that uh, one local community is using their top, their landfill as a, a wind, I think, or solar. And Rockland is too. Probably right? solar. Yeah. So I don't know if we've, you know, looked into that or if that's there fits into one, the green. There, there was a study done on our wind in Abington, yeah. and we weren't really on the charts okay. to really accept wind. Love to, absolutely. But um, I don't think we were high on that wind velocity to power, uh, which you know, would be wonderful. <coughs> How about sun? We get sun here. We get sun. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Shines on Abington every day. Every day. Um, a few dates um, I have. We have posted April 28th, 9 to 3 is our annual cleanup day. May 21st will be the Griffin's Garden Dairy Stipe. Uh, pending weather, uh, rototilling and disseminating. Anybody would like to um, put in for a garden? July 14th through September 15th, the farmer's market every Saturday, correct? Yes. All right, at, at Griffin's Saturday. Dairy this year? At Griffin's Dairy. Okay. Um, and also September 22nd at the end of the year, we've already done our 9 to 1 will be our yard sale. And everybody's welcome to bring their things down to that. How, how's the new, the new location for the farmer's market working out? Did it help pick up any uh, Lorraine could speak to that traffic? if she'd like to. Our resident farmer. She has her voice tonight. She does. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lorraine. Lorraine Ryerson. Um, yes, uh, moving it over to Griffin's Dairy, the idea of that was to try and get some of the community gardeners interested cool. in putting their produce up there also for anyone in the community that wanted it. And yes, it did do, did do better over there than it did here. And hopefully the garden's going to be bigger this year, but we still have to wait for the delineations and that kind of stuff before we'll know that for sure, so that we can get more people in. Some uh, a couple ladies used kind of smiles that just couldn't wait to get gardens last year, said they'd never do it again, it was too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought it's easy was really just to go neat. to Sunny Ray Farm and, yeah, and buy right. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, the garden's looking really good, and hopefully, and the same gentleman that did it last, it tilled it for us last year, has bought new equipment and wants to do it again this year for us. Good. So, good. and that's all volunteer. So anybody that would like one, you can go onto the SAGE site and uh, sign up. But like I said, we, the numbers, we aren't positive how much more we can add to it until we get the numbers back from, mm -hmm. from that. And I'm sure that we'll have that before we're ready to put the guidance in. We should be able to, yeah. Great. Very good. Probably into March, are we able to? <coughs> well, thank you, Lauren. Well, thanks very thank much. Thank you, does anybody else have anything for Sue? I'd like to thank the Sage. Yeah, thank you for coming. coming in. Thank no, you. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, AbingtonSage.com. Thank you, John. Very good. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Thanks for coming. All right. <clears throat> Next on the agenda. Let's see here. We have the annual review of the town manager job performance. Uh, per the town manager's contract, the, the Board of Selectmen conduct an annual job performance review. And uh, how it's done is each selectman fills out a five-page questionnaire. Uh, they can meet with the town manager if, if they so choose to discuss his performance. And the questionnaires are then uh, handed back to the chairman to be summarized. Uh, has everyone had a chance to look at the summary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions? No. Very good. Okay. Um, I have a summary here. Uh, it's just based on the, town, uh, the, the goals and objectives that we have adopted back in 2010. Um, I, can re I can read it, or we can just hit the highlights. So it's not that long. Would you let, want me yeah, to read it, John? Or? No, you, I mean, you can do whatever you'd like. Well, hit the, the highlights. Uh, basically, um, the, the, the goals of uh, the, the goals and objectives list that we adopted is getting, getting shorter. Uh, we, we bumped off some, some big ones this year. Uh, one of them was the implementation of a regional fire dispatch agreement with Holbrook. Uh, that was a very important step that satis satisfied a state mandate, <clears throat> and it's going to be uh, 
the fire department's going to be a more efficient uh, fire department because of it. Uh, the adoption of the health insurance plan design legislation uh, that we just did um, a month ago. Uh, the hiring of a full-time information technology employee for Town Hall. That was long overdue. Uh, the increase of hours for the building inspector and um, the planned reopening of Fire Station 2, planned for April. <clears throat> uh, some of the things that are ongoing, uh, the pursuit of a 60-40 split in health care through collective bargaining, uh, the implementation of new financial software package, uh, and also uh, working to establish a personnel board slash committee uh, and review the policies and make changes at town meeting to bring personnel bylaws up to date and in line with the charter. That was on the warrant last fall. Uh, it did not pass, but uh, we're going to do our best to make sure it passes this spring. Uh, and what needs to be done? The formation of a DPW is still on the list. Uh, also uh, provide a comprehensive five-year forecast of, of revenue and expenditures. Uh, and those are the main ones. <clears throat> so if anybody uh, has any questions, otherwise we can... <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, That's very, it was, very good. You know, nice job, John. Thank you. I we're, appreciate we're, it. We're knocking them down. It's sometimes frustrating, uh, always rewarding. <laughs> always rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. We're moving along here. Let's see. If nobody else has anything about the job performance review, we can go on to the uh, budget review. I'll okay. do that. Um, most of you have books that, uh, that um, yeah. deal with the budget. Uh, Where is the book? Yeah, that's Terry. That's a budget. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I guess. <laughs> well, I guess the first question I have is. Um, is this just because it's a preliminary stage? We're not going through it. No, go. Oh, okay. no. Oh, no, no, no. no. That'll happen next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, Terry. Terry, we didn't have these and we were on the finance committee. <laughs> Should I go get mine, John? No, I, I no you don't need oh, to. Okay. You, you, know, you, you can look at it later. The first part of the, the, the intent of the budget is to provide you with, with greater detail. And what we did was we organized it in such a way this year that provides you with a, a global summary by department based on personnel, purchase services, supplies, and other charges. Those are the main categories in the summary. And within that, you will see what the percentage increases are. We have added um, a percentage increase column so that you can quickly reference and go through and see, ah, you know, this is going up 6.9%. It's uh, related to the Board of Assessors. Why is that happening? You go to the Board of Assessors tab, and it'll provide you with a detailed explanation uh, as to what the drivers are, what's causing the increases. So in addition to that, what is very helpful, both on the detail page and on the um, actual uh, summary, budget summary, is the FY11 budget, the FY12 budget, proposed, what has been spent year to date for the FY12 budget, and what is being requested for the FY13 budget by line item. That gives you a fairly decent snapshot in time of where things are going, the budget trends, the budget increases, what, what is um, really driving the budget numbers the way they are today. What, on the detail page, we also go back to FY10. So on the detail page, you have FY10 actual, you have FY11, which is the which is actual. It's, it's labeled um, line item budget. FY12 line item budget, and uh, I consider that proposed until the end of the fiscal year because uh, there will be changes and the actual year-to-date expenditures as of 1231. Now, that's probably five months out of a six-month snapshot because the budgets are due to the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee uh, by charter on the 15th of January, which happened to be a Sunday, Martin Luther King's birthday on a Monday. Um, these these um, budgets were, were provided to the Board at the end of Tuesday. <coughs> The um, importance of 
reading through this, and, and if you, you take a look, for example, at the first one, which would be uh, assessors, uh, you will see the FY13 narrative. And that provides you with an explanation, brief explanation, as to what makes up the line item um, um, in the department for the salary and wages. And they're broken out by, by individual position. And um, you'll see the, the costs associated with them. And I guess at this point, what I can tell you is that we have begun the review process much earlier than last year because last year we were trying to put together a budget format. format. So this year we have um, been a little bit more on target. We're providing a little bit more information. And we expect that this budget um, will be a little easier um, to, to, to go through. You'll, you'll understand um, you know, some of what's, what's happening, uh, some of what's been proposed and requested. Now, the, the key to what has been proposed and requested, the, the proposal is really the request of the department head. Um, it has not been reviewed by the town manager. The budget has not been balanced uh, at this point. And it will take us several months to balance the budget in the review process with the Finance Committee and the uh, Board of Selectmen. And I, I will spend some time each week updating the Board on some of the budget trends, where we're headed, what the issues are. And of course, as you read through this, if you have any questions about any aspect of the budget, um, certainly you can give me a call, email me, and I will if I can't provide you with the answer, I will research it out and find out uh, what, the, what the actual answer is. Included in this year's budget for the first time is the Abington School Department budget. It is not in the same format as the town budget, uh, nor, is it re nor is it required to by state statute. It is not required to have a line item object or expenditure budget. They're allowed to have one budget number. That, that's all you're voting on at town meeting. So however that number is uh, divided out is certainly based on uh, input from the school committee and the superintendent. So um, you're not going to get the same budget format that we have here for a variety of different reasons. One, primarily the most important one, is that it's not required by statute. So that's um, you know, certainly wh where we stand in regards to the, um, the budget. It is out. Uh, when we get to the revision two portion of the budget, when we revise it and fine tune it a little bit, I will then put those, that information up on the website. We expect three revisions. We expect a second revision, a third revision, and we will have the final um, budget detail revision for town meeting, which would be the final budget recommended. We expect and hope that we have a consensus budget between the Board of Select and the Finance Committee and the town manager makes my life a lot easier, and certainly the residents of town meeting uh, as we move forward. So that's, um, you know, the budget in a nutshell. Great. Chris, thank you. Any questions? Kevin? Yeah, I, I would just, I've had the opportunity to look at, it, at the budget proposal in depth. I like it very much. I think it, it's exactly what is needed because the issue, it, it delineates not only the position, but whether it's a full-time equivalent, and gives a number of hours, and I think a lot of the information that's portrayed in the budget submission now probably is going to answer a bulk of the questions, so it should make the process, streamline the process, and obviously this process, as we all know, gels, you know, and as, as time goes on, but I think, at least from my perspective, it looked very succinct, and I'm very happy, you know, that it, it kind of calls out everything that uh, you could possibly look at, so when we get the numbers, when they start coming in, I think it'll be very easy to follow. And, um, I, I think it's a very good work. Thank you. I appreciate Bye. that very much. And John, do you have an expected timeline? Are you expecting to go to town meeting with a budget on April? or We are that we're not. We're, we are certainly not going to be in a position to go to a town meeting in April. The governor is coming out with his budget. Uh, on the 26th, I think. Um, we do have preliminary numbers from him. But by April, the House will be just reviewing 
the we're not prob we probably will be just getting the House numbers by April. We will not have the Senate or the final numbers uh, in time for for April. John, did they at the uh, I didn't go, but at the MMA uh, uh, convention, did they mention whether they'd have the local aid resolution done? Anytime soon, or did they or was they silent on that question? They were they were uh, pretty silent on that question. I think uh, first of all, the governor had a last minute hitch. Uh, I don't know what happened. He wasn't uh, he didn't attend, so Lieutenant uh, uh, Governor attended. Um, we do have the numbers on, on on local aid at this point that are they have level funded general aid to cities and towns, which is really no surprise. They increased uh, Chapter 70 money a bit. Um, they increased uh, uh, transportation chapter 90 money uh, a bit and um, that is still has to be debated as to when they're going to reach a resolution I expect it'll be about the same time that they reach the consensus resolution which was I think in um, May sometime mid-May yeah I, I guess the only my only comment would be is if we could get a read from the and I'm sure I'm Quite sure you're right on top of this on the legislative delegation. If there is, if if the census is because I know, in, just in reading the papers, when the governor proposed his budget or going to propose it, um, he provided for additional revenues for the sin taxes, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's no appetite in the legislature to fill that void, I guess the question is, is what are they going to hold harmless? If it seems to be a uh, uh, meeting of the minds that they're going to hold local aid harmless and it looks his numbers look pretty good I think we're in a, a good position, but I would agree with you until such time as we Generally speaking the local aid resolution used to be done by March, but in the last couple of years They've waited it, it, which it becomes problematic. So I guess it's like everything trying to read the tea leaves to see you know, it, It's a it's a great if, budget if those, num if those local aid numbers are, are solid well, I, and I, just to add to that, another level of um, uncertainty: they, um, the state house has received 900 and revenues, 940 million additional dollars in revenues, but every one of those dollars have been spent or committed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a 150 million dollar increase in um, immigration health health care uh, for for immigrants. There, there are a number of, in other words, the state legislature and the state house has spent money uh, that they really don't have, and they're hoping for larger revenue numbers, in which they did receive, um, and so they're going to use those numbers first. So, so I, I don't know how much of that 940 is going to be up for grabs in relationship to additional aid. What my sense was, and I think I said it before I left, was that they're going to level fund you know, local aid, and they, they, the general aid has been level funded. That's what they're indicating at this point. Uh, House uh, House uh, Leader uh, DeLeo indicated that um, they were going to do whatever they could to, you know, keep the aid numbers, you know, where they are, but they have challenges. Um, and I, I don't expect to get less than what I received last year, but I don't, uh, expect a significant increase. Mm -hmm. I do expect the increase in Chapter 70 and in Chapter 90 money. But beyond that, um, I don't see uh, a significant increase anywhere in, in local aid other than what we have. So, With that said, do you think um, if, if it looks like those numbers are starting to gel, and, and again, I don't know based on your own process, yeah. if, if assuming those numbers were there, do you think it would be ready for an April town meeting, or? if um, if I was if I felt very comfortable with the numbers, uh, in other words, you know we can always go to town if it's the board's desire to go to town, but we can certainly do that uh, earlier rather than later. Um, if I if I think the numbers are not going to change significantly, I I would be willing to do an April um, you know town meeting on the finances on the budget itself. The the only caution is that if those numbers change between uh, when we go to town meeting and the end of the fiscal year, we're going to have to um, have another meeting to adjust the budget. Um, we could certainly wait until um, the fall town meeting to do that, 
to make those adjustments. Um, but usually we reserve the fall town meeting for capital items and, and other uh, minor adjustments. We really don't touch the budget and, and begin to transfer money until the special within the annual. But we can do that, and I think it would be something that the board needs to think about and make a determination as to if the numbers seem to be solid enough from the state, we may go at it at, um, at the April town meeting and get it over with. Yeah, and I guess, and again, just simply my own personal feeling is that sometimes I think that we went through a period of time, one before you came, is that the mantra was, well, let's wait till June. And the problem was we didn't, what we knew in April, we didn't know anything different in June. Right. And it was always the adage, well, we could have done this in April. Mm -hmm. And I guess, and again, I know this, you've got your own internal process, but looking at it on that basis, I think it would be far, if it's something we can strive towards, I think that's something that um, would be, it's always been kind of a, yeah. a pet peeve of mine that we wait till June, you know, even back when I was moderator, it just it didn't make sense to me. But in any event, given what it is, and that's why I asked if, I know there was a couple of years that you couldn't do that mm -hmm. because the governor and the legislature were miles apart and we didn't have a meeting of the minds. If it mm -hmm. looks like everybody's kind of on the same page, you know, I think we, yeah, can we can take those votes. And, then and that's the cue that I would be waiting for. And the House uh, Ways and Means will not come out with their numbers until mid-March. Yeah. But even if they come out with their numbers, that I think, as Kevin said before, I think you need to wait till at least you have the joint resolution. I think that's the, if you get that well, number. Well, that's the, yeah, that, the joint re resolution was always the, okay, now we feel confident right. enough. But again, again, I say this is a process that's gelling together, and these are just very preliminary, so... However it shakes out, it shakes out. Yeah, yeah. but I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, if the numbers are no different in a April than they would be in June, why wait? I, I, I agree with that. Now, my review process that we have outlined, uh, meeting with the department heads and then the department heads with the board of the, the finance committee, will complete itself in time for town meeting um, in April. So we, we're shooting for that. That time period. Oh, play by year, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very good. Great. <clears throat> Town manager report. Um, a couple things. One is that I have um, completed the budget schedule for the department heads. We are we started our budget review process today. We met with the uh, board, uh, the police department, and the fire department. There are obviously certain needs that the departments will have going forward, but that the, um, again, we have to wait and see uh, also what our, our um, savings are going to be on plan design, um, which unfortunately the legislature has established such a lethargic process that it'll take almost uh, 60 to 90 days to complete from the time you have your first PE. C meeting, which is the uh, pu uh, uh, public employees uh, committee meeting uh, that will make the decision on what they will accept as far as how the savings will be utilized. Uh, that's going to play a, a big role in whether or not we hire additional personnel, provide salary increases for certain, uh, for additional personnel, uh, not a, for some personnel or all personnel in town hall. And so those issues are something that um, are obviously going to take time to, to gel, as you've indicated. So we're going to be working closely on that. Um, I should have out this week sometime uh, the first request or the first meeting with the uh, I, IAC, the Insurance Advisory Committee. Um, and then within 10 days, um, two days or 10 days, I have to uh, have a meeting with the PEC, provide them with a scenario on cost savings. Um, and those, we do have that information, um, and we need to start this process no later than February in order to meet the guidelines of the, of, of the program to implement changes for July 1st. This budget will be contingent upon our ability to meet those timelines um, by uh, June 30th or the beginning of, of July. So this budget is going to include those savings? We are hoping, yeah, that, that's, that's the approach. Um, if, we, if we work that hard to save the money, we should, be, we should work that hard to, 
uh, to incorporate it in the budget and see what we can do in relationship to um, departments. The, um, the second issue I wanted to talk to the board about is this issue with respect to the Board of Health. Uh, approximately a week or two ago, I met with the Board of Health on a request for proposal or not, and what is called an invitation for proposal. The proposal was reviewed by town council. We spent hundreds of dollars reviewing that process. Uh, the last complaint that we had received was that the prior administration did not meet with the Board of Health to review and to go over and to negotiate and to implement uh, a contract. The proposal that is on the table that as a Chief Procurement Officer I have presented to the Board of Health is a proposal that will incorporate curbside collection in an automated fashion. A two barrel limit one 64-gallon container and one 64-gallon container for recycling. The containers are going to be purchased with the savings in the first year of the program. The barrels are purchased in, in, uh, by the town with the replacement barrels, if any, are the responsibility of the contractor. The contract proposal that we had submitted allows for any number of competitive bidding processes from disposal, curbside collection, transportation, anyone can bid on all aspects of the proposal or any one of the proposals. For example, we may have somebody bidding on our trash just for disposal purposes. We may have somebody bidding on it just for recycling collection. We may have somebody bidding on it for uh, trash and recycling. The proposal in the automation process is designed to achieve a higher level of efficiency than we currently have. Everybody on the Board of Health knows that the current system is not working. We have a three barrel limit and recycling. The tonnage numbers for 4,200 and 4,232 homes, which includes 208 condominium units. We have 708 condominium units in the town. Is approximately 7,100 tons. That equates out to 1.53 tons a household. The area consortium of 14 area communities, the average per household tonnage is 0.5834. The per tonnage for the entire state is about one ton per household. Some towns recycle, some towns don't, some, some towns have um, curbside uh, collection or uh, pay as you throw, other towns don't. When you mix all of that together, the average is about one ton a house. We're at 1.538 tons. If we are to implement curbside collection, automated trash collection, we anticipate approximately a 2,000 ton decline. That's what we experienced in, in Mansfield when it was implemented. Um, I have the experience of how it was implemented, the manner in which it was implemented, the results, the savings. Those savings equate out at $80 a ton to $160,000. Now, while we, we will not realize that savings in the first year because we have to purchase the barrels without an additional capital outlay, in the second year, we will certainly reap those savings and reductions. And every year thereafter, the tonnage numbers will go down. The way the bid is structured is that we pay a flat fee for tonnage. And we own the tonnage. We tell the hauler where to go because we are bidding 
the tonnage out separately from or the disposal out separately from curbside collection and we believe and I know through my experiences that this type of process will save about $160,000. Now the question is do we continue to do what we're doing now which we know does not work which over the last year has not worked which over the last three years has cost us more money each and every year or do we have a responsibility to the taxpayers of this community to find a way in which we can maintain trash in the tax rate provide them with a good level of service and make that service efficient I believe that that is our collective responsibility if and I'll use myself as an example because I'm a, I'm a, a Mansfield resident I have five kids in the house now five of us my kids move back in you know you, you get them out you get them to college they go to school they come back smarter and they want to live home so I have the kids back I've had married married couples back I've had everybody back it's like a hotel room uh, but in any regard they're great to come back but none of them know or care about recycling so if they are not recycling efficiently enough you'll never have enough room in the 64 gallon container to meet those limits and what do you do if you don't meet those limits you as I did call up a friend or my, my mother-in-law who's alone and I deposited my two bags or additional bags that I couldn't fit in my trash that week but I had a campus meeting I brought everyone together and I said this is what we need to do to recycle more it hasn't happened since this program forces recycling without going to a pay-as-you-throw program it is successful in every community in which it is adopted there has not been a community that has not adopted this program and has not saved money the Board of Health hired a, a, a person in a, a, a grant writer somebody to work not a grant writer but somebody to work with us to develop an RFP the individual was a, a guy by the name of Dan Balboni with 25 years in the disposal industry working in various companies we sat down with him we had four meetings with him we went through every aspect of the RFP his point to me was this is the only way it's going to work he looked at the Mansfield tonnage drops he looked at how, where we were and where where they were uh, to, uh, the following year and the fact that we were able to make the program efficient and if you talk to any resident in the town of Mansfield today they will tell you that they love the program it's not about the contractor it's about the method of collection and it's about saving money it is my responsibility to this town and to the residents of this community to ensure that we have the most efficient program for the services that we provide in the taxpayers dollars that they're, they're expending could you imagine if we went to town meeting and said to the town meeting residents we're gonna go with this program we know it hasn't worked in the past but we've been paying hundred and sixty thousand dollars we happen to like the contractor so we'd like to keep him and I come up and tell you and the Board of Health as I have that we can save hundred and sixty thousand dollars that's documented that's in similar communities in this area that have saved that type of tonnage and, and money are we paying a higher tipping fee than other communities absolutely the, the structure of the program as it is now we pay eighty dollars a ton that number fluctuates so sometimes we can't meet it at the end of the year we ask for reserve fund transfers or we have to appropriate money 
this, the way it's been bid out in this contract, it's a flat fee. We own the trash, we tell them where it goes. We get a separate bid on trash, on, on disposal. There's no room to pay the $80 a ton, which we are currently doing, and perhaps the contractor taking it to XYZ for a lower tipping fee amount. Hey, brokers, trash just like it's a commodity, just like anybody else. Is it fair and is it equitable and it is, is it the right thing to do? I think those are the questions that you have to ask yourself. Now, the issue of condominiums. According to council, this town could be in a boatload of legal trouble in relationship to providing service for some condominiums and not service for other condominiums. So you've got 708 or nine condominium units, and we're providing coverage for 208 or 210 units. What about the rest of them? How did some of them get grandfathered in and not others? Is it fair? Is it equitable? Is it the right thing to do? In this contract, and, and to much of the credit of the Board of Health, we went ahead, they voted not to include condos. I told them in my commitment that, okay, if we're not going to include condos, I think it's the right thing to do. We will sit down with every condo association and work out a favorable rate for each unit in the town with the contractor who's awarded the bid for the entire town. That is my commitment to make sure that the condominiums those that are currently picked up and those that are not picked up receive the fairest and lowest rate possible. That has never been done before. In addition to that, the contract itself calls for three additional collections. A um, spring and fall brush and leaf collection and a Christmas tree disposal. Unfortunately, Christmas only comes once a year, unless you are a, a municipal employee, then according to Franny, it comes every, every day. <laughs> it's true. But um, in any regard, I think that the plan that we have proposed has been met with, in my opinion, an unrealistic amount of opposition. Some of that opposition, I believe, has been festered from outside of the Board of Health. And I think a lot of it has been festered uh, from within the Board of Health. When I attended the Board of Health meeting two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I explained every aspect of the program. We went through line item by line item, section by section, page by page of the contract. They took the vote, four to one, or four to, uh, three to two, not to include condos. Painful decision, right decision for the town. At that point, there was never an indication from anyone that they were going to come back to a meeting. And I believe the meeting was surreptitious in the sense that I was not invited to that meeting by the Board of Health. They spent two and a half hours at the previous meeting with the Board of Health, and they decided not to support the program. Why would you not support a program that's going to save the taxpayers $160,000? Why would you not support a program that was going to expand services, provide you with a level of service that we can afford that will remain in the tax rate, will not have to be subject to any kind of an additional override, be held over the heads of the residents of this community, you vote for, you, we need a debt exclusion for trash. Won't happen because we have managed how we are going to control the tipping fee and how much tonnage is reasonable for this community to generate to begin with. If there is a need for a second barrel, that barrel 
that 64 gallon container will have to be purchased. The, the barrel will be purchased in the first year and every subsequent year thereafter a tag would be needed. Tag in the first year, second year you don't have to purchase the barrel again, you've already purchased it, uh, but you have to pay uh, the cost of disposal. Now that cost of disposal in my, my opinion will can come down so that the fee in the next year will be less than the fee in the first year. It's a mystery to me as to why the Board of Health decided, in, in my opinion, behind my back, without any additional input, without them telling me that they were going to invite me to, uh, invite me to the meeting, take this issue up after I went through page by page of the same bid document that they subsequently, they later on, voted against. It's not how I do business. It's not how I, I think boards and committees should be doing business in this town. There's something fishy with regard to what's going on. I don't know what it is, but I am at this point suspending the RFP process. I want the Board of Health's buy-in on this issue. It's, it's too important. I don't want Board of Health members standing up there at town meeting and saying, well, I didn't support that. They were elected to make decisions, just like this Board of Selectmen were elected to make decisions. If we canvassed every decision that we had to make, we wouldn't make a decision. And my opinion is that this is no different than any other administrative decision. I am waiting for legal counsel's opinion that I am going to send out to the Board of, of Health there's a meeting scheduled of the Board of Health, which I will gladly attend on Thursday evening. I ask that every member of this Board of Selectmen, if possible, I know that you're out a lot. If you can attend that meeting, it would be extremely helpful. The questions that I answered in a two and a half hour period, in my opinion, at that meeting, seemed to satisfy what we were doing. The question was, or the issue may be, why not give town meeting a choice? Let town meeting decide. Town meeting is an appropriating authority, appropriating body. The decisions have to be made by the leaders of this community, and they have to stand by that decision. There are a great number of reasons as to why we should be doing this. But for whatever reason, the Board of Health with influence from the outside and influence from members within, and I do believe that there might have been a violation of the open meeting law, decided that they were going to discuss this at a meeting, put it on the agenda at the last minute, and then with little to any discussion, maybe two or three minutes, decided that they were going to not support the RFP. It's not right. But that's where we're at. i got better things to do. I've got um, issues with the unions in relationship to 60-40 split and I have to sit here in, 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 in dialogue with you over something that makes complete common sense to do is in the best interest of the town but you can't get an elected body who is responsible to, to make those decisions to make them. John, so their vote was a non-binding vote. You're the chief procurement officer. That's what correct. if next Thursday they still fail to support your RFP? You can't suspend the, the RFP process. We, we, if, uh, when does the I, contract expire? The contract expires in, in uh, uh, July 1st. So something has to be done. We yeah, can't just not put out an RFP. That's not a, mm -hmm. a reasonable solution. If I could. Kevin. Um, only because I was placed in a similar situation as John and Rock. I, I will Between look forward to your advice. Board of Selectmen, and it was on the capping of the landfill. And I had to take over the capping of the landfill. And it was a, I was up there every day, and we got the job done. But I guess to Chris's point, I, I guess obviously if there's a meeting, if, if uh, you know, a compromise can be worked out, I think that's the best strategy for all concerned. But I, I would say that 
you know, in your capacity as chief procurement officer, the final, at least in my experience and opinion, and I, I look forward to see what council says, um, the final authority as it relates to the awarding of the contract and the putting out of the bid rests with the chief procurement officer. That is correct. And at, at that stage, I think, you know, therein is your decision as both town manager and chief procurement officer to make the appropriate decision that you deem fitting and proper on behalf of the town. Mm -hmm. um, I think and the only caveat I see in this is, and, and I don't have the bylaws in front of me, but, uh, you know, that's why I'd be curious to see what council has to say in terms of the disposal of solid waste. I, I think it, it then begs the question down the road as to some towns have the DPW handle it, some towns have the Board of Health handle it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it, it rests on the, the final question of whose authority is to A, put the contract out to bid, and B, to award it. And if they use the procurement process, um, that rests with you. Yep. So I, I would say that that would be your... It, and I have answered that question with counsel. The chief procurement officer can assign the Board of Health Correct. to administer the program. Correct. And that's what I will do. Mike. Um, I've talked to John this morning about this. I, I also talked to the chairman of the Board of Health on this issue. And I'm not going to sit here tonight and put words in anybody's mouth. But we did use the terminology that's our collective responsibility to see this happen. I would like to see this meeting with the Board of Health be on TV in front of the people of the town because even this evening, this is really the first time I, as a city member of the Board of Selectmen, got the information mm. on what the real proposal was. You know, I understand you went there, but I don't, and I don't think the residents have a firm grasp. There's a lot of good, good things happening. There's a lot of potential. There's no doubt about that. Um, I just think that uh, there could be some underlying issues, and again, I'm not about to put words in anybody's mouth, but um, I have a lot of respect for the members of the Board of Health, and, and I think that, um, that they would be wise to have them here and hear their side of it, ask the questions, residents want to show up. I don't know if we have time to post that on Thursday night, and even members of the Finance Committee, I think it would be very appropriate for them to be here. But I think it's something that we have to communicate. I, I don't want to stop communicating, and I do believe you have the authority, and you should. But I, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable with some of the emails that are going back and forth and some of the things that are being said that um, maybe it's not necessary. So I'd like to find out for and let the people of the town know. So that my proposal would be to, to, to uh, see if we can't have the cable company here, schedule their meeting for Thursday if they're willing to do that, uh, post our meeting so that we can intermingle or go back mm -hmm. and forth and enter into the discussion and notify the finance committee and invite them here and the residents of the town if they want to show up. So I would put that in the form of a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. What time is the meeting scheduled for on Thursday? I believe it's 645. 645. Do we have a second? It's not scheduled for this room. So the I mean, chairman of the chairman of the yeah. uh, Board of Health is the, one, the one who determines the what, what the agenda is and where the meeting is going to be. They have never been on TV since I I've been No, here. and I, you know, um, I, again, I, I attended a meeting of the captain of the dump when they were talking about the captain of the dump, and it was just like, you gentlemen, and it was, it was a meeting that just kind of, oh, I just go and see what's going on, and it was thoroughly intriguing as, as to what the conversation and, and what was going on. Now, I learned an immense amount about, about the town and how it's going to handle this captain of the dump. Had that been on cable, so wouldn't the townspeople know. That then, is scheduled for the 13th of February. Correct, correct. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you could ever repeat that, you know, as good as that particular meeting was. But, again, if I don't know if it's proper for us to schedule the meeting here, um, but it's, it's, their, it's their ball, so I'd much rather have them host the well, meeting. But, I mean, it, it, again, um, I don't, I mean, I'll call Mr. Let Mayor me Let right. me just say that I agree with you. We have a meeting scheduled for Thursday. Um, you can make a motion, the Board of Selectmen can be there, um, but you can't force the chairman to have it on TV. Correct, but I mean, if I have to get somebody to have a portable camera, I will do something. I, I will, all right. If he's willing to change it here, is it too late to do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, can we, if I get a hold of him and, and ask him if he just change the... Yeah, do you want to amend your motion or withdraw it? For... You made a motion. You made a motion to have a 
meeting Mo at motion 645, 645 here in the Carter room on TV. Yeah, if, if, if the, so to speak, the chairman is willing to do that, I guess that would be appropriate. We can't force him to do that, but that's that would be in the Well, even if he's not willing to do that, I think we should still be at that meeting Oh, absolutely. So. But we, we could, can we post our meeting with the Board of Health? Uh, and then have a joint meeting. Arrange that the room be here yes. with the Yeah, team. I don't want to violate the law or technicality or something like that. Obviously, we're trying to do this in the best interest of the town. Yeah. I, I'm I, sure they'll be amenable to yeah, changing the room. I, I, I don't do, think that exactly. that's good. I, I think that... I, I, I agree with you, Mike. I think that, you know, maybe if we just say to them, look, would you... Yeah. A friendly type. I think if right. we require the right, presence, right, right. No, everybody's going to get the back. Yeah. They're so genuinely... They're, they're good people. Yeah, that's that's it's just, so we'll ask them, just look, if, if the selectmen that we're going to post our meeting, uh, we'd like to have it in the, in the Carter room. Would you be amenable to having it there so we can have it on TV so everybody gets to see it? Sure. Yeah. And it's a very important issue for the people of this town. Like, you know, like, I think the, just the better understanding they have, the less. Well, just just so we're all on the same page, I, I was proposing after the RFP and the awarding to have three public meetings, outreach meetings, yeah, one at the Council on Aging, yeah, absolutely, yeah. and then a, an instructional video. And the Board of uh, Health needs to be included in that also. Well, exactly. Although, you know, they. All right. I'm not going to say much about no, that, uh, other no than I, I, um, we are going to outreach the people. We are going to tell them, but the the issue, the fundamental issue is, is that it's the it's the town manager, the board of selectmen. Um, really, it's it's an administrative decision according to yeah, court council. It's, it's, it's not a referendum vote. Yeah. No, I, I agree. With you. Okay, Mike. Let's go. Did you want to withdraw your motion until you talk to Bob Manning? Uh, no. Oh, we talked to. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Would it would it be prudent for this board to take a vote to support the RFP? I think what I would rather do is give you the RFP as it is written, reviewed by council three times, and with the final numbers, so you can read it through. And, and, and figure that out. But on, on, on Thursday, you're going to get the same RFP with their changes that they asked for at the meeting that I was at before they voted no. So this would be the final this negotiated the final RFP final. between you and the Board of Health and everybody's yeah. input. And no. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah. I would like to see yeah. that. Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to vote on any RFP until I see what the Board of Health's concerns are. Right. Yeah. I mean, they obviously have some valid concerns. They're an elected board. I think they've done a pretty good job. They have been on TV in the past. I mean, it doesn't happen now, but they have been on TV. Were they invited to tonight's meeting? Excuse Were me? Were they invited to tonight's meeting? I'm no. sorry. I can't hear you. Was the Was Board, the board of, of Health invited no. to tonight's meeting? No, no, of course not. I think, no. I think they took the How, vote. What do you need to be invited to a public the, meeting for? It's a public well, meeting. Well, the same, the same, the, you complained that you weren't invited to their meeting and yeah. that you, you said it was a... Well, the, the the reason I, I think the vote came out after we set this agenda. Well, l let me just answer that question because they I think, it's a, very, I think it's a very night. good question and it's a very good observation. I met with them for two and a half hours. In that meeting, they never had indicated to me they had some concerns we addressed every one of those concerns. I walked away from that meeting with a complete and clear understanding after they reviewed the RFP that they were all set. They didn't like it, parts of it, but you know what? They were on board. Okay? So I thought everything was all set. Then they hold a meeting, last minute, put on the agenda that they wanted to talk about quote unquote the trash, although they did say at the meeting that they were gonna they were they, they, they were gonna make a recommendation. That never occurred. So they waited, never informed me, never told me that they were having a meeting that I spent two and a half hours at explaining the RFP line by line, page by page. What they want to change, we put in there. And then they vote at this meeting, four to one, not to support it, and they don't invite me. I spent two and a half hours with them. I don't think it's right. Could, can no, we get a copy of the RFP with the changes that were made? Is that possible before Thursday? 
I'll give. I'll send it out tonight. Okay. He'll, he'll have it tonight. Good. Okay. I don't know if you'll be able to print it off because you copy might, might be older. Than than it, so me printer you. might be older than you. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have anything? Is that All the right. end of your Tom and his report? I can go on, but I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're we're just to, to go back on that. We're gonna we're gonna post the meeting for. Yeah. Okay. Fine. A joint meeting with the board of health, and we're yeah. gonna. Hopefully it'll be if they meet here in the spring. Right, and then we can, I don't know, Chris, can, you know, through Chris or Justin or whatever, we can see what's available. Okay. Okay. Tell them we're requesting you not here. <laughs> Selectman old slash new business. Does anybody have anything besides trash? No? Just, Just we, um, I, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You we, we had completed your evaluation based on goals and objectives. I think that's something we need to set some goals and objectives for this coming year. So maybe that's something we can put on an agenda okay. next time out or the time after. Just Absolutely. So. Anything else? Just um, on the issue of capping the dump, John, um, that's something. Do we have funds that we're going to have to make available at this annual town meeting for that? Is that something we should be starting to... Um, I, I don't believe sized or you know for for the residents or, or the funding or how we're going to go about which 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 um, how we're going to cap it. There was like six or seven different ways we were going to cap it. We had talked at that meeting whether or not we, it was worth uh, keeping the leaf piles and everything on that. You know, depending on the way we had to cap mm -hmm. it, because whenever you increase or decrease, you had to notify DEP. If you dug into the cap, you had to notify them. So there were some issues with even. Continuing on, leaving, you know, the what we have up there, the little bit of the recycling plant that we have up there now. I I um I did talk briefly about that with the um, with the board of health, and what I think everyone was in agreement to was that they wanted to have some sort of a recycling component at the at the landfill. That that's important. I agree with them. I think it is. I think that what I would say is that we can go out with this RFP or one right after it and RFP uh, for a vendor to do white goods, to do uh, metals and plastics and, and styrofoam and, and have people who want to deposit them at the recycling center do that as opposed to paying a fee at curbside, because there are there is a fee structure at curbside now, that's going to stay in effect. And as you read the RFP, you'll see in the RFP that the fee has to capture the total cost of the disposal. But there's no alternative, because we haven't thought that far ahead. And one of the alternatives could be that we we do another RFP for white goods and have. A dumpster dumpsters up there, compactors, and and have residents avail, you know to go up there and drop off their recycled items that they don't want to leave at curbside, or if they have too many of them, they want to take another barrel and go up there. That's fine, but there should be some alternatives to just a curbside collection issue. And in the RFP, they're they're going to dump the tree the leaves and the brush that they pick up at curbside at the facility. So there's going to need to be an area there for um, chopping, uh, and, and, and there's money in the budget for a brush hog to take that material and chip it up so that people can go to the recycling center and pick up some mulch or some Chips. whatever mm -hmm. and put it around their uh, their trees or or their uh, flower beds or whatever they want to do so there would be that kind of ability but we don't we don't have that now it's true but just to get at that I mean I don't want to labor the point but just quickly um, it was apparent that if they were going to continue on using it the way we do now we had a cap in a certain way it was going to cost us money to do that in a certain way and the fact that they were surrounded by wetlands we had to be careful which is you know it's in a swamp Mm -hmm. that, that maybe it would be more productive for the town to research another site that didn't have all these things we didn't have to worry about a formal landfill. Just a thought, something mm -hmm. we should look into. That's also... Um, yeah, and, and I think you're right. And I, I I'm very much support that concept. I, I very much believe that 
that is a good way of bringing community people together. They go down to the land, uh, the, the landfill or the recycling center, come up with a nice name for it, the Abington Green or something like that. And they can go down there and bring their newspapers, sit down, have a cup of coffee, then talk to Ken, myself. I usually go, I go down to the one in Mansfield every now and then, but they threw me out. Actually, they threw me in one of the bins. But. <laughs> that and I have to go to mine. Yeah. You go recycle here in Abington. <laughs> right. Anything else? No, no, no. All right, public comment? Okay, that's it. I would uh, move we adjourn. All right, second. I thought we had executive session, no? No. No, no executive session. No. no. Nope. I'll second right. the motion to adjourn. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Chris Prowl.